to a space that feels comfortable and familiar and safe so you can really anchor your body wherever you are and close your eyes and feel like this space has been waiting for you. The day has been busy. We have rushed from one thing to the next, I am quite sure. When we show up to this spot, wherever you are in these moments, there is this safety, this security, this comfort within this practice. Even when our physical location changes from time to time, just that ritual of the showing up, the grounding down into our seat, the closing of our eyes and the rhythm of our breath, we feel like we're home. And so I hope that's what you're experiencing in these moments. And if you can't quite feel it just yet, let's see if we can use the next few breaths to really usher us into that familiar space. So just take a nice, deep, long breath in. And then just sigh it out. A deep breath in. And sigh it out. One more in. And let it go. And then from there, find a good rhythm of breath. And then just notice if the space, the physical space, the emotional space, the mental space, is starting to feel just a little more solid, a little more comforting. A little more like home. So throughout this practice, I encourage you to stay with that breath. If there are moments where the mind begins to wander or the distractions begin to come, breathe in deeply and follow that breath out. And then do it again, one breath, one moment at a time. For these few minutes that we have together today, I really just want to touch on this idea of our nature, who we really are. And so if we were each to pause just for these next few seconds and think about what we've done today, what titles we have in our professional and our personal lives, what things fill our calendar, It'd be really easy to think that those things are our nature. It's who we are and what we do and how we spend our time. But I want us to go deeper than that. I want us to go beyond just the acts of doing. Go beyond those titles, those roles and responsibilities that we serve. And really begin to look introspectively at the nature of who we are. So if you were going to just pause and take a lamp or a flashlight or a spotlight and shine it into your heart and then go even deeper than that and begin to peer into your soul, the essence of you, what do you see? My fear is that our life is so busy and so filled up that we don't often take time to do that, to return to the nature of us, which is why our activities and our titles and our roles begin to be recognized as our nature and who we are. But I want to just explore this idea of this true nature of us and see if we can reset, begin to see something just a little bit different. I would hope that as you look in and you shine that light in, you realize you don't even need the light because there is light already there. 
I believe that our nature is one of light. I also believe that our nature is one of peace and calm and ease and clarity. But again, we are busy, engaged, involved people. And that peace, that calm, that ease, and that clarity often seem really far away. But I'd like us to explore the idea that as we move away from this nature of who we are, the world's not actually doing that to us. We're making the choice, which means that we have the choice to come right back here, right beneath heart center and reconnect to who we are. And so I have some words from one of the great teachers about this idea of our nature. And so just listen to these and see if there's one or maybe a few that resonate with where you are and what you're experiencing currently in your life. He says, peace is your nature, yet you allow yourself to remain restless. Freedom is your nature, yet you allow yourself to remain in bondage. Happiness is your nature, yet you allow yourself to become miserable for this and for that reason. Contentment is your nature, yet you continue to be drawn away by these temptations of your senses. And then he says, benevolence is your nature. But you get so tired that you feel like you have nothing left to give. And so it's not really to assign fault to ourselves. It's to own this responsibility that as much as we've allowed this nature to get a little off or maybe a little skewed or a little forgotten, we also have the same capacity to bring it back. And he goes on in his words to say that the way we stay connected to our nature is through our practice. So he doesn't just leave us hanging and make us think, we failed at this. We've let the world distract us. We've been tempted too many times. We've too, we're too far gone. But no, he ends that little saying with the line that says, the way to return to and stay with your true nature of you is through your practice this showing up that we do together, this showing up that sometimes you do on your own, this breath, this familiar space, this consistency. And so just pause for just the next few breaths and just reflect. Do you really know the state of your own personal nature right now? Could you put it into words? Could you describe it? And if words and images and thoughts come quickly to your mind, notice them. If you struggle to assign words to it or to describe it, notice that as well. Just take a few breaths and just see what comes up for you. And I don't think that Gurudev would mind if I change his words just a bit to give us some hope and to give us a pathway back to this true essence of who we were meant to be and who we are right now. Peace is our nature and we will let the restlessness go. 
take a few breaths here. Peace is our nature and we'll let the restlessness go. And I first want to validate the difficulty of that in our society. We are a restless people. Our attention is so hard to keep on one thing or one situation or one person even. And so just know the restlessness is going to be the temptation, the constant movement of just this life that we all live. However, peace is our nature and we'll choose to let that restlessness go. And then secondly, freedom is our nature and we will choose to no longer be in bondage. Freedom is our nature and we will choose to no longer be in bondage. And so think about that word bondage beyond just the first thing that comes to mind or the first image. Y'all, our bondage is most often our own thought patterns, our own negative crippling thoughts. Those are the things that keep us in bondage. It can also be situations. It can be a job or a, a colleague or a relationship or a habit. There's so many things it can be, but for almost all of us, I would venture to guess that our own self-talk, our own doubt, that's the most hindering bondage of all. But freedom is our nature and we will choose not to remain in bondage. Let's take a couple quick breaths there and let it all sink in. And then contentment. Contentment is our nature. And we will choose not to follow the distractions of our senses. Contentment is our nature. And we will choose not to follow the distractions of our senses. In yoga, we call that pratyahara. I always teach it as the bark of the tree, the thing that insulates and protects us. Our senses are powerful and they're also meant to be experienced, but not to the detriment of our nature of our being. When we don't follow every sensory stimulus that comes along the path, we'll be able to remain content. So just take a couple breaths here. Sit with that. And then happiness. Happiness is our nature and we will choose not to become miserable for this or that reason. The Buddha says that we contribute to our own suffering. In fact, some of us probably even create it. We are happiness within our nature. So why do we allow all these little inconveniences and things of life cause us to become miserable? Happiness is our nature. Let's take a couple breaths and let that just sit with you. And finally, benevolence. Benevolence is our nature. And what we'll choose to do is allow this spring of all this peace and happiness and contentment and freedom to begin to pour out from us to the point that we can't help but be benevolent. We can't help but share. We can't help but give because benevolence 
seeing humanity as this one amazing unit in this universe. Benevolence is our nature. Just take a couple breaths in. And then let's just sit for these last couple minutes that we've got together. Sit with that light peering into this inside of us. See the peace. See the freedom. See the contentment. See the happiness. See the benevolence. And through those lenses, see you. And before we close out our time, I would invite you just to picture the world. Just see this big globe, this big earth filled with 8 billion people. And just imagine for just a moment what it could look like if all 8 billion could begin to realize that their nature, not their actions, not their roles, not the things they do, but digging down deep, their nature is peace, freedom, contentment, happiness, benevolence. See that world and know that it starts with us. We are part of that world. We are part of that nature of humanity. Let's begin living it out and believing it, seeing the amazing gift of our lives and our contribution to the greater good. Namaste.